I am Alexandra Anthony. I work and own Global Face Painting at globalbookfacepainter.com. Dot co uk, sorry. Um, and the purpose of this video is to tell you um, some things that you might not know about setting up a face business. Um, not just the kit, as you can see here, but the actual nitty gritty bits. It's also going to include the legal bits that people don't always cover in videos. I am not a lawyer. I've done all of my research for the UK and I suggest that if you want to learn about it yourself, seek legal advice or actually go and do the research yourself. Public liability. Public liability is a must have for face painting because you're dealing with people's skin and you need to make sure that you are covered for any eventuality that might happen to that. Um, for face painting, you need a minimum of five million pounds. That's in the UK. Um, you'd have to check what it is in your own country, but for the UK, it's a minimum of five million. Um, and there are some very good places where you can get um, decent prices for public liability for the year. My advice would be when you go to an event, have a copy of your up-to-date public liability with you because people have the right to request to have a look at it to make sure you have it. And if it is requested by an event organizer or birthday party, have it online so you can email it to them. A big thing that I've come across in where I've actually done face painting and everything is um, people haven't had public liability and they've ignored when uh, children or customers have said that the face paint has been gotten into their eye and it's been burning them. I've had, I, I heard somebody actually say to wait until they finished doing it and then wash and then if they wanted to, to wash it off. Uh, quite personally, I about hit the ceiling when I heard this. It is something that really aggravated me. Um, I myself am a level three qualified specialist makeup artist who, and we covered face paint, well, water activated makeups as they're also known as, um, and skin conditions that you are not supposed to use these on. Eczema, psoriasis, size, anything like that, open wounds, bruises, it isn't recommended because it can not only cause cross-contamination, your product. It can introduce infection to the actual client and it could invalidate your public liability because you are supposed to know these things and to be able to have a trained eye to look out for these conditions. If they have the condition on their face and they don't have anything on their arm, you can offer to do them a great arm piece, which um, I do have some lovely pictures on my website of some nice arm pieces or some things that can be transferred from the face to the arm. Um, but you need to know these things. I can't stress enough how important knowing and getting the training is to do face painting, beauty and specialist makeup. You really do need it because if you do not have it, you could overlook something that could completely destroy the business you're trying to build. Um, you'd have to, there's no way you'd be able to wash any of your brushes with, um, there are some highly contagious skin conditions, um, infections in the eyes, anything like that. If you overlook it because you haven't had the training, you could invalidate your public liability. You'd have to get rid of all of your brushes because you wouldn't be able to distinguish which one you'd used. You'd have to get rid of all of your face paints because these are these wipe clean at the end of each thing, at the end of each event, and you can't sterilize them because it would soak into them, and if somebody, if you use it on somebody, then again, you could cause an infection to them, because you shouldn't have done that. And I'm babbling, I apologize, but it's just how stressful it is that you get the training, look for um, short beauty therapy courses, 
that can help identify skin disorders and um, infectious diseases and things like that that you need to look, learn. Um, or do a specialist makeup course like I did. I went and did a level three specialist makeup course, which was invaluable. It's taught me quite a few different things. And not only can I do this, I can do other things um, and just add it to my public liability when I need to do it. But if you don't, your public liability is invalidated and you could end up having to fork out five million plus and it'll just completely destroy you. Then next thing would be talking about the DBS or CRB checks is what they were called, which is for working with children and older adults to have things checked to make sure that you're not able to work with them, basically. Um, but this is for the UK. I'm not sure where, um, what it's for or what it's called anywhere else. In the UK, from my research, face painters do not legally require a CRB or BBS check um, due to the fact that we're not supposed to be left in sole custody of the child because we have to move very quickly. So the parents have to remove them very quickly so they cannot really go anymore. We're not babysitters. We're not child minders. Um, and other variations of people who would need a DBS check would be doctors, nurses, teachers, and I will have an explanation and a link on my website, um, which is globalbookfacepainter.co.uk, so you can check um, these points as well. Whilst the DBS check isn't legally required for a face painter, um, it is for peace of mind of parents and guardians who have the children come to you for the service you provide. If people wish for you to have one, it, they will have to get it for you themselves. You are not supposed to pay for it yourself. Um, it's a very weird thing. You're not allowed to do your own DBS check or CRB check, um, which is a bit ridiculous. Uh, the next bit about the DBS checks and CRB checks is if you have one um, because you're a nurse or you've done volunteer work with children and vulnerable adults and everything like that, technically it's used as peace of mind um, because you have one, but it's really only supposed to be used for the role that you have it done in. So if some, like I said before, if somebody wants to have one for face painting specifically, um, an event organizer or somebody of that effect would have to pay for it for you to have it done because you can't do it yourself. Um, I will have a brief, well, a more detailed description, but still a brief description on my website um, in the link below. The next thing would be talking about pricing. Um, I'd su highly suggest looking around your local area and finding out what other face painters charge in your area. Um, because you'd have to sort of see if your work is similar, better or worse than theirs. But as well as doing that, you have to know how many faces per hour you can do. Um, for a beginner face painter, it's generally between six and sometimes up to ten faces an hour. Me, personally, I can do between uh, ten to fifteen, minimum of ten faces an hour. Uh, I have done more um, when I've really gotten going, but I've not really kept a track of that. Um, another thing would be how to keep your records. You keep them, keep events that you have in a diary, what you've paid for them, if you've had to pay for them, what you've possibly made on them, 
And something that I try to do is I usually have somebody accompany me to have a tally chart of how many faces I've done in that day. Um, it helps keep a track of how much I've earned and how many faces I am capable of doing over that period of time. Sometimes it's really, really good. And sometimes it's not very good at all. It's sometimes you wonder if you actually should have worth going sort of thing. But it's all a learning curve. You have to do these things to learn what's best for you. Um, as well as with pricing, you have to consider how far you're willing to travel. Are you traveling by bus, walking, cycling? Do you have a car? How much is the petrol going to cost? Um, you also have to understand, people have to understand that they're not just buying, they're not just getting you for a service of doing face painting. They're buying your experience, um, your training, your public liability, if you have a CRB, if you manage to get one, um, or DBS. You, I changed the name, it's lovely. Um, the products you use. Um, I will be doing another video uh, within the next week about the products I use, um, why I use them, why I don't use certain other ones, um, and about the stressing of glitters. I can't, that's, but that's for the next video. So, from me and Glowbug, please have a look at um, my website, glowbugfacepainter.co.uk. I get used to saying that. I'm saying.com. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye!